Hello heroes, Joe Smith here. Pearl Harbor, 9-11. That New York City fire a couple weeks ago. Travis Scott concert. January 6, 2020 in Chicago, Baltimore, Atlanta, Houston, Portland, Seattle, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Three years ago in Washington, D.C., when six were killed and over 100 got sick from bad batch of marijuana that was circulating. And now this marks the deadliest days in American history. Day afternoon in Polk County, setting off a chain of events that would culminate in the deaths of four people. Listen closely as a caller describes seeing a woman being beaten and kidnapped. Somebody who's been beating her up and everything. And if I do not stop her, I believe he's going to kill her. I am dead for you. That frantic call would send investigators looking for a black Mazda. It was being driven by this guy, 35-year-old Raquel May Villar Villalona, who had allegedly been assaulting his girlfriend. Once deputies found his car, the sheriff says he took off, at times driving on the wrong side of the road. So the deputy wisely turns off his lights and disengages the pursuit. He continues to drive southbound behind the vehicle as it flees from the attempted traffic stop. But he does not engage the vehicle. He does not keep up with the vehicle. But he's going in that direction. The sheriff says this camera footage shows just how far behind the deputy followed the Mazda. He says after several miles, Villa Lona would go on to cause a chain reaction crash that the sheriff describes like this. It was total carnage. It's among the worst traffic fatalities we've seen in this county. Along with the black Mazda, three additional vehicles, a Ford F-150, a Ford Escape, and a Toyota Tacoma were caught up in it, resulting in the deaths of a 38-year-old man and 73-year-old woman who both died on scene. A 48-year-old man later died at the hospital. Their identities are not being made public. Villa Lona died on scene as well. With his crazy, wild, out of control actions because he wanted to beat and injure his girlfriend, did not want to stop when the deputies tried to stop him. Now the sheriff says had he survived the crash, he would have been facing multiple felony charges, including three counts of vehicular homicide. We can also report tonight the uh, the driver's girlfriend was not in the car when the crash happened. She was at a local hospital. She is said to be doing okay. She, however, is not cooperating with the investigation, according to the sheriff. Linda back. So there you go. This needs to be added as a national day of remembrance and memorial as being one of the deadliest days in American history. Just like the Travis Scott concert should be a national day of memorial like Pearl Harbor and 9-11 was. And also that time three years ago in Washington, D.C. when it was either four or six people were killed and like 120 were sick and hospitalized from a bad batch of... Uh, marijuana or K2 or whatever the hell all that shit is. Oh, but the Democrats are worried about January 6, 2020 at the Capitol building where uh, one person was murdered. A female, mostly peaceful protester that was shot in a crowd through a window behind a locked door by a coward that had ample opportunity to retreat. But yeah, 
pretty sure more people died elsewhere in Washington, D.C. that day. I'm pretty sure more people died in Houston and Los Angeles and San Francisco and New York City and, and Baltimore and Chicago and other cities that day, too. Thanks for watching. Joe Smith signing out.